I'm Hannah. It's my first week as a child protection officer. My team leader told me how impressed she had been with my job interview, the respectful way I spoke about children, and how families and communities try to protect them. After I signed my contract and the organization's code of conduct, I was given a big pile of documents. But there was a crisis unfolding, so I quickly had to head out to meet the community. I soon felt overwhelmed by all the needs of the children. How do we know where to start? My team leader explained there had been an interagency assessment that showed what the needs and protective factors were and how our agency could best work with children and adolescents. But I was confused. Should I just focus on my few tasks? I decided to concentrate on doing the best work possible in my role. But I still needed to be aware of the wider situation for children and their caregivers. Our team focuses on child labor and psychosocial support to children and their families. We work on prevention with community mobilization and family support and then respond as needed. But I wasn't clear how the agency designed these programs. So my team leader pointed to the Child Protection Minimum Standards, or CPMS. It's a practical handbook that lays out the minimum standards humanitarian workers use to protect children. It provides detailed explanations on preparedness, prevention, and response to child protection risks, and is our go-to guide in humanitarian settings. Weeks later, I'm feeling overstretched. It's awful when my team can't help someone. I've learned that when we can't meet an identified need, we connect with other sectors and service providers who can help. That made me feel better. I do outreach with community members every week and I'm building a network of support and child rights champions. One day, I met a girl named Samira. She seemed to be involved in exploitative work and was miserable. I read the child labor standards. It made me want to act. But what could I do? Well, the CPMS are a starting point for practical guidance on the protection risks that children may face in refugee or other crisis settings. They include key actions that we should consider at all levels of intervention, like individual case management. By doing an assessment, I realized that Samira's family was facing severe financial difficulties, so I registered them for an integrated program to combat child labor. My team runs it with colleagues from livelihoods and education. Over time, I continued to drop in on Samira and her family. The mother was still pressuring her daughter to work and was clearly struggling with the situation. But again, what was my role? I am not a clinical psychologist. I turned to the standard on psychosocial support, looking for simple actions that I could consider. It confirmed that I needed to ask the family if they had trusted neighbors who watched out for their well-being. I also wanted to make sure that children were participating in the group activities and that their mother received parenting support. I asked if she wanted me to visit every week. Knowing that these are good practices laid out in the CPMS helps build my confidence and provides a common reference I can use with colleagues in other agencies and sectors like health or food security. Every two weeks, the whole child protection team meets. I always have a lot of technical questions. When our team leader can't answer them, she refers me to the Global Alliance's website, where I can find the free CPMS e-course and other learning resources, as well as detailed guidance on specific topics. I've been doing my job for a few months now. I work hard to live up to our common principles, especially the best interests of the child and supporting the community's resilience. But I often wonder, how do we know if we are making a difference? It's not easy to answer, but the CPMS do include indicators that help us measure the quality of our work and whether we are having a positive impact on children's lives.
So through all that turmoil, I think the CPMS have helped our program be accountable to children. I feel more capable of working with them to prevent harm and provide assistance in any situation that arises. And I see that these minimum standards will allow us to continue advocating and acting for children's protection and well-being. Long into the future.